Hey guys, I am now joined by Maria Aleprando, who's a monster combat designer uh, on the Elder Scrolls Online, which you guys have been working on for five years. How does, how does it feel to actually finally be able to tell people about the game? Uh, quite thrilling. Uh, I've been working on it for a couple of years myself, and uh, as an Elder Scrolls fan, it's really a treat in order to not only work on the game, but be able to come to E3 and be able to show it to everybody as well. So, so where do you personally come from? Are you more of an Elder Scrolls fan first, an MMO fan first? Like, What, what is sort of your history with those two things that are now coming together with this game? Um, for those two things, I would say I, I was playing Oblivion uh, for a long time, a couple hundred hours, and then I was into MMOs at the same time. So for me, it was a natural progression where I thought, if only, if only this was online and I could play it with my friends and I could experience all these dungeons and all these monsters and the storylines with my friends. So for me, it was just a natural thing that was going to come. Yeah, I mean, those, the, the Elder Scrolls games are definitely something where you have a lot of those water cooler moments where, hey, what did you do last night? What did you stumble upon? So, you know, how are you guys, you know, with Elder Scrolls Online, it's clearly you're playing with all these people, but how are you trying to, like, sort of incorporate those water cooler moments that are so crucial to the franchise? So I think why those are so interesting is because you have to explore the world and you find new and interesting things at every turn. But we really want to embrace that on the Elder Scrolls Online. So as you're traveling around the world, we have a compass that'll point you into interesting directions. And you don't have to go to a city or a town to pick up five quests, go quest, come back, turn them in. You go there and the area has its own in-depth story in that area. And you can go there, complete everything there, enjoy your exploration, and then go and if you want to keep delving there, you can. There's plenty of other dungeons to go to. There's also the Alliance War. And what that is, is the three alliances come to Cyrodiil and start battling over the Imperial throne. And they try and crown their own emperor. So it'll be a whole area, all of Cyrodiil, if you're familiar with the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, it's all of Cyrodiil as that PvP area. So, just roaming around with your friends, that's going to bring some stories as well. We also have the main story, which is Molag Ball, the Daedric Prince, is trying to drag all of Tamriel into Cold Harbor, which is his Daedric Plain, and he's using the help of Menamarka, who's the first known necromancer, to raise an undead army to help him do this. So that is more tailored for the single player experience and more tailored for your personal personal adventure through the game. So there's so many things to explore in the Elder Scrolls Online. It's just exciting to be able to come to E3 and talk about it. So, I mean, that's kind of the thing. You know, the, the Elder Scrolls games have always been very single player, like your own story, your own experience. And you guys have made a big point to say, hey, this game is going to be soloable if you want to do sort of the main arc. So what, why was that so important? And was that always part of the design, that people were going to be able to have their own story that they could do by themselves like an old Elder Scrolls game? Yes, uh, we absolutely wanted to include that as it's so important to the Elder Scrolls games that there's a main threat in the world. And of course, at the age of Prince, there's no threat like them. So uh, we really wanted to tailor that for your own personal experience. That's not to say that you can and go and do some of those stories and help with friends. And, but we also have the public dungeons, instances, raids, and the alliance wars for the more social aspect of it. So we really wanted to give everything something to do. We made the whole of the game for a social environment, but we made the single player uh, main story arc for that tailored experience. So you know, you're working on aspects of the combat, and the combat in this is very different from anything else in another Elder Scrolls game. Like, but it seems like you guys are trying to incorporate some of the elements that people do remember, like stamina and magic. So how have you go, gone about incorporating those things that will feel familiar? So you touched a little bit on uh, health, stamina, magic. Like each character has that and they use that. Uh, health is obviously health. If you lose it, you're dead. Um, and we also have Magicka, and Magicka is the resource that you use for all your class abilities. And then Stamina is used for blocking, sprinting, and crouching. So every character in the game can block, sprint, and crouch, which is sneak, regardless of your class or your character or your alliance. Um, also, every char character in the game can use any weapon in the game. So if you want to be a warrior type character in full plate mail with a, with a bow, go ahead and do it. And the more that you use that weapon, the better you're going to get at it, which is very, very familiar to Elder Scrolls players. So we are really incorporating those key points of combat into this new environment for the Elder Scrolls. It seems like from the little I saw that the combat definitely allows, uh, you know, you can, you can block, which is, you know, usually when you play MMOs, it's, you know, you hit one, two, three, four, you yeah. wait for the cooldown to happen. This seems like there's definitely an attempt to make it a little more active so the player is doing things in between those cooldowns. Absolutely. We want the game to be a lot more tactical as opposed to ro rotation based. We don't want you to do the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We want you to be involved in the world, watching what's going on, reacting to what's happening, blocking big powerful attacks, and when you block them, 
the, the monster or enemy will go off balance and stagger backwards, and that's your opportunity to charge your weapon and do a powerful attack. Um, the, the first two weapon or the first two skills that you can use are for your weapon. The next three are based off your class that you choose, and we really want you to choose and slot abilities that are supportive to the t type of playstyle that you want to go for. The last ability is an ultimate, and the way that you you earn your uh, to be able to cast your ultimate is uh, by something called finesse points. So finesse was designed by Ed Knapp, one of our gameplay designers at Zenimax. And what it is, is it rewards you for that tactical play. So every time you block, every time you kill a monster, every time you avoid a blizzard, every time you, uh, you know, really react to the world, it rewards you these finesse points. And the more finesse points you build up, it builds your meter to be able to use your ultimate. So the better you become at the tactics, the better you can use all of your abilities. And also that carries over into PvP. We don't want to change the game on you when you go from PvE to PvP. So we're trying to teach you all these mechanics, and the mechanics uh, will help you learn the counters to all of those, and those carry into PvP as well. So the things that you'll see the monsters do, since monsters behave a lot like players, you'll see that in PvP and be familiar with it. So it won't be an alien world once you go into Cyrodiil. So as a, as a monster combat designer, what is your, of the, 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 the monsters you've shown so far, what's your favorite? Well, it's the mud crab. <laughs> I love the mud crab. Um, it was one of the very first monsters that we did, and for, for some reason it was the most important one. <laughs> uh, mud crabs are everywhere in the world. They're the one monster that is everywhere all the time. No matter what province you're in, there's mud crabs everywhere. And uh, so we made them uh, actually burrow into the ground, and they go and come up behind you, so they try and flank you on your sides. And that was the first time that we knew we wanted our monsters to really think about what they were doing when they were fighting you and try and position themselves around you or try and get help from their buddies. Like for example, wolves are pack animals, so they'll run around you. The, uh, the alpha wolves can come and call more pack members and they'll come in. We also have things like frost mages can lay down a wall of ice and that'll protect them but they might have friends that'll run behind them and also get protected by the wall of eyes because he'll shout out, you know, get behind me. And so we have monsters really working together. And I think when we started going just with the basic monsters, we, we really started thinking about if I were a mud crab, what would I do? The most existential question of all. So people are gonna be able to finally play the game next year, right? Yes, yes. Um, also pay attention to elderscrollsonline.com when we start announcing betas, which will come later down the road. All right, Maria, thanks so much, and uh, congratulations on finally being able to talk about the project. Thank you so much for coming, and I'm excited, so thank you. All right, take care, guys.